Hi, Ange. You alright? Yeah, good, man. Um, could just get the team news, please, and also a bit of an update on Mickey and Madders, if there is one. Uh, yeah, um, oh, Mickey and Madders, no, no real update, mate. Uh, same as uh, a few weeks back. Um, uh, sort of uh, international break. Uh, we've had a couple of issues out of that. Uh, young Ash Phillips picked up a, an ankle injury with uh, the England team, uh, so he, he's out for a little while. Um, still sort of assessing it, but... Um, at least probably a month out, and then uh, we're just checking on uh, Pape. So it's got to be of an issue coming back from the national team as well. So we'll just see how he is uh, tomorrow. I didn't train today. Um, aside from that, I think we obviously Biss is suspended, but we'll get Destiny back. Um, I think everyone else is okay. Obviously, off the back of a Wolves defeat, you had the international break as well. And I, I keep reading articles that Tottenham going to play a different way after losing. Van der Ven, Madison, but you keep saying this is the way you want to play. Do you feel like people aren't listening to how you want to play the game? No, I don't think it's it's whether people are listening or not. I think and it's fair enough. You know, when obviously, um, you know, our last two results haven't been um, you know haven't been great. But I guess my point is that you know, as I've said all along, we're at the beginning of trying to build something, and I think it's always important wherever I've been in the early stages that you stay really um, focused on that, on the kind of football we want to play, the kind of team we want to be, and not allow short-term sort of results, good or bad, um, either way, to, to kind of influence, you know, how you're going. And um, like I said, but, you know, people will, will always kind of question and, and I guess scrutinise my approach or our approach. I understand that. And it's not really about me trying to convince people about what we're going to do. It's more about sort of internally making sure that the players, the staff, um, we just stay on course. Obviously another injury then at the back, Ashley Phillips. So, And you've got people in now in terms of the recruitment and the scouting. Has there been meetings over the last few weeks in terms of with January approaching about any incomings, just making the squad a bit stronger? You've had some bad injuries. Yeah, no, we, we, we're obviously, you know, they all sort of, I guess the challenging bit for us, they all came at once. It's, it hasn't kind of been staggered. So, um, but, you know, in terms of January, the, the planning's well well away with that. Um, obviously, Johan has come in and he'll, you know, he's leading that in terms of um, all the background work. And, you know, my involvement won't sort of <coughs> ramp up till we get closer to, to, to sort of January and understanding exactly uh, what our requirements are at the moment. All that work's been done in the background and, um, <coughs> you know, um, with young Johan leading and he's obviously brought in some people as well to help him in that area. We'll, we'll work with him when the, when the time's right. Uh, Premier League clubs have voted against a temporary ban um, on loan deals between associated clubs for the January transfer window. What do you think about what do you think about almost half the Premier League clubs um, owning other clubs? Is it good for football? And do you think Tottenham maybe are at a disadvantage because they they're not in that situation? Um, I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, the, the, this whole, whole football landscape is is constantly sort of evolving and, and changing. It's certainly a lot different to what sort of um, even in the recent past, um, you know, the traditional model of you know ownership of football clubs. It's it's changing, and and I think you know all football clubs are looking at different ways how they're going to structure themselves. Um, it's not a space I spend a lot of time thinking about because it's it's stuff that's kind of out of my control and and, and really. You know, I try and <coughs> deal with the structure we have in place here and, and there's a pretty clear structure in here, you know, Tottenham about, <coughs> you know, the, the way the clubs run and and that's kind of where my focus lies. Cheers, Ange. Thanks, mate. Rob. Hi, Ange. Uh, just ask you about Jamie Donnelly. He's been on the bench against Wolves uh, last time out. What have you made of his season today and is he someone who's potentially close to making his first team debut? Yeah, no, Jamie's, um, yeah, we're, we're tracking all the young guys and, you know, Jamie and um, yeah, Alfie Dorrington have been training with us fairly regularly over the recent period, obviously with all the injuries, but also prior to that they were, they were coming in um, fairly uh, <coughs> regularly. So, you know, um, I think that's uh, <coughs> that's kind of the first step for all these young guys is to, you know, get into the first team environment, see how they cope with training and, and, and see how they sort of develop from there, how they... You know how they adjust to everything we do and the way we do it. So, um, and um, yeah, you see, look, we're we're down on numbers, obviously. So guys like him will will get more of an opportunity to to you know make an impact. Like I said, of training and 
And if he continues to do that, then um, yeah, the opportunity will come for him. Rodrigo Benzica played 86 minutes <coughs> in midweek. Obviously, first start in nine months. He's had the long trip back from his homeland as well. How's he reacted to that and what condition is he in ahead of this weekend? Yeah, no, he's fine. He trained this morning. Um, so, um, yeah, it was good for, for Roddy to play. He was really keen to get back into the national team setup. I mean, obviously, you know, he was keen to get back with us as well. But, you know, he obviously missed the fair bit of, you know, that national team and it's something he, he feels like most players, I guess, you know, really you know, proud about representing his country. So, um, and the fact that, you know, um, he got an opportunity to start, I think it's good for us. It gives him that confidence that he can get through a game. Obviously, that ha he hasn't happened with us, but he's, he's sort of re increased his game time. So, I'm assuming he's come out of it, you know, with you know, even more sort of confidence about himself and where he's at. And uh, that's good for us. I think that's a positive. Has this been such a stop-start season for Tottenham so far with the three international breaks? How much are you looking forward to just this continuous period of football now? Yeah, look, I mean, I guess we're in the same boat as every other club. I mean, it's, it is a bit weird. You, you kind of play sort of a series of games and then the, the guys go away. And um, I guess probably more challenging for us in that we've, like I said, we're still in the early stages of trying to build something, so you don't get a lot of momentum in it. So, um, as you said, now we've got a sort of clean run right through till March. So it uh, gives us some time to work with the guys. Thanks, mate. Charlie. <clears throat> Do you want to talk about another player who's on international duty, Gio Lo Celso, and how he's been coming back? Obviously, he had a pretty intense game, a lot of travel, and yeah, how he's looking for Sunday. Yeah, again, like all the rest, all the other international guys, um, yeah, they all trained this morning, so there was no issues with any of them. Um, the South American boys were the last ones to get in um, yesterday, I think, along with Pape. So, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, Emerson, uh, Gio, um, Bentoncourt, um, Romero. Um, yeah, they all train sort of this morning, no issues. And Oli Skip, I wanted to ask about, obviously, he started the first game against Brentford and then hasn't in the league anyway since, just how he's looking, how he's shaping up and whether he could, you know, help with the midfield absentees. Yeah, no, you know, Skip, he's been working hard at training. He's one of the guys who's obviously stayed back with us. We've had sort of four or five that have done a lot of good work the last couple of weeks. And, um, look, he, he's, he's working hard. He's, you know sort of um, waiting for his opportunity but that doesn't mean he, you know, he, doesn't, he can't make an impact and he has made an impact coming in off you know during games um, and uh, and helping us and um, you know look the challenge for him of all the guys is you know there's no doubt the way we are at the moment with the numbers we have they'll all get an opportunity to play it's it's about what they do with that Yeah just wondered how much of a challenge that is getting that midfield balance right because obviously there are a few absentees in that area and yeah if that's been you know a headache a bit yeah, look, I, I think the back four is probably the, the major issue for us at the moment. We're, we're, we're kind of really low on, on sort of depth there. But, yeah, like you said, midfield as well. And, um, look, I, as I said, that's just the, the, the period we're going through at the moment. We've got a lot of absences. Our numbers are down. But um, it's also a time where other guys get an opportunity. And, yeah, f from my perspective, um, in this early phase, it's about trying to expose you know as many people as we can to see you know how we cope with you know playing our football under stress and when there are changes and and uh, against different kinds of opposition okay george please hi and um just going back to rodrigo where do you see his best position in your midfield three i think i think the beauty of him is he he can play a couple of different areas i think he can play as a six he can play as sort of further forward eight um He's even creative and, can, I think, can score goals as well. So I think, you know, we, we we're kind of hoping that, um, you know, with with him and, and, and Matters and Pape and Biss, um, you know, P um, Pierre sort of, you know, we were well stocked in that midfield area for kind of different kinds of combinations. But um, obviously we, that's been disrupted a bit. But um, look, like I said, I think... The key for, for Rodrigo is just to get him back to that level physically and mentally where he feels really comfortable about, you know, sort of playing at this level. And uh, I don't think he's far off it, you know, from what I've seen. And um, and again, certainly over the next sort of week, few weeks, he'll get that opportunity. Um, Tottenham fans have generally seen him as kind of a box-to-box -box midfielder. I guess more of your eight, but he obviously plays a six for Uruguay. Yeah. As he's kind of working his way back to fitness, could the six position be a little bit more sort of conducive to him whilst he's not maybe ready to be pressing as, as he was previously? Yeah, yeah, potentially, I think. Um, and it's probably why, you know, they, you know, 
much I probably used him like that at, in Uruguay, you know, and, and watching the game and how he played, he, he kind of, he did it really well, you know, so you know he can play there. Um, but I don't think he's he's that far off sort of from a physical perspective, um, you know, being able to play his normal game, you know, whether that's that box-to-box, as you said. Uh, part of it, I think, is just getting belief in his in himself and his own body that he's capable of doing it. But I, from what I've seen at training and, and what we've seen in games so far, I don't think he's far off it. And just finally, um, Aston Villa have had a really good start to the season. Yeah. You know, Emery's done really well over the last year. How much of a test will will they be? And, and I guess they also lost two players early in the season, two injuries, and managed to bounce back. So I guess shows that is, you know, they you can get back on a run after a little while. Yeah, no, they've they've been good since um, you know he's got there. You know, he's um, they've been really consistent um, with the way they play their football and uh, and. Particularly, you know, over recent weeks, they're scoring goals and, and you know, feel, you know, obviously got a great deal of belief. So it's going to be a great test for us. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we're at home, at, you know, apart from sort of the Chelsea game, you know, the result there, our home form's been really strong and we just got to make sure we get back to that. And, and as you said, everyone's got, you know, we don't have two injuries, we've got a few more than that. So, um, but we're, we're, like I said, every club will go through it. And, we've, and for me, you know, it, it does allow me to really kind of look at every aspect of our squad, you know, and, you know, you, you kind of try and do that by design, but sometimes it's just, you know, that's the, the, the sort of um, our existence at the moment where guys will get an opportunity to play and it's great for me to see how they, like, how they cope eh, with playing our football, how they cope with the stress of, you know, playing against good opposition. So um, it'll be a good test for us, but, um, you know, it's, it's one uh, we have to be up for.